Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. Hey guys, so today it is part two of the Norse reading list of videos and we're going to be talking about books of the Norse myths, retellings, renderings, such forth. I've got a lovely stack of books next to me and my new little Kuska mug. I'm absolutely loving this. I'm a basic bitch and I know it. So, the Norse myths and books on such myths. Now, in the last Norse reading list video that I did, we talked about the kind of source texts of much of the Norse myths and history and religion basis, that sort of thing. The two main ones, of course, were the Poetic and the Prose Eddas. Now, these books are what most modern retellings of Norse myths come from. But if you're not quite feeling reading relatively heavy, kind of strange language, strange form, the skaldic and eddaic poetry type tellings of myths, and you just want the myths, the stories themselves, then I've got you covered. So the first book that I'm... I guess this video is kind of two different things for two different types of people. If you watched the first video in the reading list and thought, you know what, I don't want to read the Eddas, I don't want to read the Saga of the Volsungs, I don't want to read Havamal, I just want to know the myths and a bit more about like the cool stuff, then this video is for you. This is going to tell you what to read next. Or the second type of person who has read the source text or is thinking of reading the source text and is like, I want more, I want them in a more kind of digestible form and I want to know more history. I'm done with the source texts. Now I want to read what people think of them and how they were kind of tetris then this video will also show you where to go from there. So when it comes to the Norse myths, as we established in the first video in this series, the tellings of Norse myths that have been passed on through time immemorium have become kind of quite fragmented. They don't sit in a particularly neat and tidy chronology as much as anything. Some of them seem to happen at different times, some of them seem to happen simultaneously. Some things that you read about in one myth that feels quite early on relies on you knowing stuff that has actually happened in another one later on, but those events have to have happened before that one. It gets confusing. So I think that's why a kind of straightforward just retelling of the myths is a little bit trickier to manage. But there is one volume that I would recommend if you are not so much feeling reading the actual poetic Eddas, as I said, if you don't want too much kind of bump from context and, and notes and explainers and sourcing and that sort of thing. And as much as I'm loath to admit it, that is Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. Now, this isn't the video for me to go into my feelings on Neil Gaiman and I don't know that there ever will be, but suffice to say it kind of pains me a bit to say yes. In terms of a very readable, nicely rendered, straight up, more storytelling tradition type rendering of the Norse myths, as I say, if you just want your myths straight up, no chaser, Norse mythology by Neil Gaiman is the one to go for. And there is something quite charming about this volume. I think the main thing that sells it for me in terms of sitting in the kind of canon of Norse myths books is it is quite akin to maybe sitting around a fire back in Iceland in the 900s or whatever, being told these stories, these histories, these myths, it does have that storytelling quality which does hark back to, I guess, what the original kind of poetic Edda-based myths were doing. And it does make them really approachable and readable for new audiences, so that is not to be sniffed at. But as I say, A, my problems with Nogaiman, well, yep, another time, and B, I'm not so sure, personally, that the Norse myths can... Well, they can obviously be read just like that, but I don't think you get the most out of them if you just read them as these little snippet myths. As opposed to, say, reading like some of your Greek or your Roman myths, and I think that is more to do with the fact that those are more well-known and more rounded and we have more context and they are more in kind of the general sphere of knowledge that we know a bit more about them. Whereas because the Norse myths are so steeped in kind of mystery and confusion and kind of uh, different conflicting times and, and, and versions of them, you kind of need a bit more context when you're reading them. We know when we read myths and stuff that they are more folkloric storytelling type devices and that they're not always going to make perfect sense. Sorry if you can hear the cat snoring. But with the Norse myths, I feel that that can potentially put people off because some of them happen so out of context and out of chronology and a little bit higgledy-piggledy and there are things that you kind of have to know and suspend disbelief on some bits, as with all myths. That's kind of why I feel you need a bit more context when you're reading books on Norse myths. And one book that I feel does this really well is the Afor alluded to book, and that is Tales of Norse Mythology by Helen A. Gerber. Now this is a beautiful gift edition as well. I think it was published by Barnes & Noble, but you can get it over here. And it's got this gold foiling on the edge, 
beautiful shiny shiny so shiny that the ring light fucks it up it's illustrated it's got notes it's in plain kind of nicely written english but there is a caveat with this one now helen gerber was i think she was born in like the mid 1800s died in the early 1900s so this is an old book now it seems silly talking about an old book as a caveat when talking about other old books but the thing when you're writing a book about other old books is that the further you go along in history you get more information, you get more context, more research, more development, more discoveries and they are going to inform that. So some of the sources this book uses are kind of older and potentially a bit outdated in terms of Norse history and modern developments. So in terms of the kind of accuracy of some of these things, some of it's going to be a bit outdated and outmoded. And there's not a particularly kind of in-depth bibliography or anything like that for further reading it's just kind of a list of this is the book but not much about it and as I say some of them are kind of older and not really de rigueur anymore but with those caveats this is too heavy to keep holding but with those caveats in mind Gerber's Norse mythology is a beautiful book a wonderful gift for anyone who's interested in Norse mythology and we're coming up to Christmas so take from that what you will and it is a really nice one to sort of sit and read and spend some time with with a nice hot drink in the evening with some candles on the go which I may or may not have done then the next book I'm going to mention is one that I picked up in a bargain bookshop and was thus kind of a little bit like oh is this a particularly kind of reputable text but having done more research on it, it's not bad. And that is The Norse Myths by Dr. Dr. Tom, Dr. Jones, Jones Colin. It's not called Dr. Jones. The Norse Myths by Dr. Tom Burkett. Now for me, this one kind of sits somewhere in between something like Neil Gaiman's Norse Myths and a slightly more academic book. It's not fully kind of scholarly academic. It's kind of approaching that way. It's not just a straight up rendering, here are the myths all in a row. It's got the myths interwoven with more details about the gods, a bit like Helen Gerber's does as well. I should have mentioned that with that one. Whereas Gerber's gives more context to each of the stories as it's going along and kind of links it by, okay, here's a chapter on Odin and here are some of his big myths and here's a bit more about him and then moves on to the next god and some of the other stories. This one kind of gives you the myths in theme sections as well, but then the latter half of the book is talking a little bit more about kind of the legacy of Norse myths and Vikings as explorers and discoverers. As I say, it's not going to be kind of like your full scholarly history, but it's kind of an approachable Neil Gaiman-esque look at the history as well as just the myths themselves. And this one also has some pictures. In terms of the kind of legacy of the Norse myths and the Vikings, it then moves on through sort of the kings of Norway and Denmark and Sweden and things like that and how the kind of heritage and descendants of the gods continued on through kind of Scandinavian royalty. So this is really good if you're looking at reading the myths and then a little bit more of kind of what next. I suppose Burkitt's book kind of bridges the gap between books of Norse myths and non-fiction books which we will talk about in the next video. Then the two kind of possibly most well-known or most popular books on Norse myths up until Neil Gaiman's was published would be Caroline Larrington's and Kevin Crossley Holland's. I've put them here. So these are your two books on Norse myths that you are more likely to find on the shelf in a bookshop, whereas Neil Gaiman's one will probably be on a table somewhere, let's face it. Particularly now they brought out a nice red edition in time for Christmas. And they are two kind of different beasts. And I think Caroline Arrington and Kevin Crossley Holland have got more of a scholarly background. They are experts in the field and that does show through, but in different ways. So there's kind of two kinds of books on Norse myths that you've got your straight up renderings of the myths, no fluff, no bump. And then you've got your more kind of contextualized myths, which as I say, theme, along with the gods or the giants and the histories and things like that and put the myths in where they fit thematically and contextually. Caroline Larrington's is more the latter and I found it really really enjoyable. It's got loads of notes but not too heavy, they're still quite readable but they do feel more meaty than something like the Burkitt or even the Gerber to be honest because it feels a bit outdated. As I think with any book on Norse mythology that does it in that way it kind of falls foul a little bit of expecting the reader to know a bit more of the context and more of the myths when it mentions one in passing it says oh that's in chapter whatever but you kind of it kind of jolts you out of reading that passage if you're not quite sure which one she's referring to but it's also got some cool illustrations it's got the historical contexts in terms of discoveries that have been made to support the tellings of the myths that have been handed down she's quite good at holding Snorri Sturluson's versions of the myths to account and in that framework of you know coming from a christian telling which is really nice to see instead of just kind of going snorri sellerson said it so it must be right and it manages to not be too dry it's kind of more on the wet side of scholarly texts 
It's readable, but with more bite to it in a really kind of satisfying way. But it's not quite as narratively straightforward as, say, Yenil Gaiman, which is to be expected. Now, for me, Kevin Crossley Holland's book nearly hits that sweet spot of presenting the Norse myths in a more narrative chunk. These are the myths, here is a rendering of what happened, and then having the notes kind of separate. But A, it's a little bit awkward. You read one of the myths, and then it says, look at the notes for this, and then you flip to the back of the book and you read the notes, and the notes are really interesting, and they do inform the reading of it and what you've just read, but it's flipping back and forth, and it can be a little dry, as opposed to Caroline Arrington, who kind of manages to inject a bit of humour into even the, the, the drier stuff, the more scholarly stuff, like she even uses the word farted at one point when she's talking about the context and stuff. I know it's really small things, but that really made me laugh. Whereas Kevin Crossley Hollands is a little bit more dry and it's kind of proving that he knows his stuff and it's kind of like, I trust you, I know you know your stuff, make it fun, dude. And the same kind of goes for the telling of the myths as well. They are a little bit dry. They do feel steeped in, you know, the more kind of Adaic language and a little bit more maybe true to the source texts. And it's a bit of a weird one, you know, do you go a little bit more true to source and come out a little bit dry, or do you go a little bit more Neil Gaiman and go a little bit too... It is undoubtedly a tricky balance to strike with any kind of text that is retelling ancient myths of any kind. Between getting the accuracy right when it comes to the source texts and context, and not sort of rendering something that anybody who knows stuff about this is going to read and go, what the hell are you on about? But also between making it readable and making it fun and then not losing any of the aforementioned accuracy and veracity or whatever. So it is undoubtedly tough and all of these books are really worth reading if you want to actually know the myths themselves. If you are all brand new to the Norse myths and you don't even know any of them and you just want to read them, then yes, Neil Gaiman's Norse Myths is a good jumping off point, but I would beg you not to just leave it there. Once you have read the myths in their most kind of established, agreed upon forms, read more, read any other one of these books. If you're interested in more sort of context about the individual gods themselves and where they fit into all these myths and things that may not be agreed upon across myths, then read something like the Gerber or the Caroline Larrington. If you read Gaiman's book and you think it's a little bit too kind of popularised, then pick up Kevin Crossley Holland's version of the Norse myths. That will do you perfectly. If you want more context behind the myths themselves, start with Tom Burkett's Norse myths and then you could go on to something like From Asgard to Valhalla by Heather Donoghue, which barely even kind of retells tells the myth, only really does it very short, and then it's all about the context of the myth, it's all about the legacy, going through sort of romanticism and all the way through. That is a book that I will also mention in the kind of non-fiction rendering, but it does slot in with the myths as well. There are a couple of other volumes that I will give a brief mention to. First one is this one, Norse Mythology. It doesn't actually really have a kind of attributed author, it's published by Arctus Press. This is another one that I picked up in a bargain bookshop when I'd forgotten to take a book anyway and I wanted to get my Norse on. I can't speak to the kind of accuracy or kind of quality of this, but this one is a more compendium of just the myths straight up. There are a few more of them in here than in Neil Gaiman's and it also comes with some tales of the sagas in there as well. So if, again, if you're just after something to read that just to get your myths and your sagas in your head, could give this one a go. And another couple that I haven't read yet but I am really intrigued by, particularly given what I've said about Kevin Crossley Holland's volume of Norse Myths, are his two volumes that he's done for younger readers, which are picture books. So he's done two volumes now, uh, illustrated by Geoffrey Allen Love, I believe, and one of them is Tales of Odin, Thor and Loki, and then the other one is Norsemen Tales from Across the Rainbow Bridge, I think. So these are designed for younger readers, and I'm really into that because I think, again, there are plenty of kind of picture books that maybe draw on your classic Greeks and Romans, whereas, you know, in the Norse Myths there's stuff that kids are gonna love. Also some stuff that kids should definitely not know until they're older. Those are definitely ones worth looking at if you have little ones. I know that I will be getting copies for my godson when he's older slash for me, but I can read them to him. So there you have it. Plenty of volumes of the Norse myths to get your mitts around and plenty of different ways of reading it and different things for different people. I hope this video's kind of served the purpose of the two different videos for two different types of people kind of thing, but we shall see. Have any of you read any of these books on Norse mythology? Do you have a favourite? Do you have a favourite myth? Do you have a favourite version of a favourite myth? Talk to me. I am kind of wondering if Stephen Fry's ever going to do a retelling of Norse myths. I don't know that it's as likely because he's more like classics, isn't he? He likes his Greeks and his Romans, but I wouldn't be too surprised and I'd be wary. So next up in the Norse Reading List series I'm going to talk non-fiction and that one will be less kind of in-depth than any of these have been, not that these have been particularly in-depth because I have not read all of these books that I'm going to talk about. So hope you enjoyed this video, hope it wasn't too long and waffly, I'm having fun and I will see you next time. Goodbye!